From Call of Duty charging money for a red dot site to a character with a $100,000 price tag, these are the greediest things found in video games. And we'll start with Fallout 76, considered to be one of the worst game launches of all time. Aside from countless bugs and server issues, Bethesda added the shadiest microtransactions despite the game already costing 60 bucks. The Atomic Shop let you buy emotes and skins for extra money, which nearly caused the game's fan base to riot. Tons of items had fake prices, pretending to be 50 or 30% off, but it got even worse because pay to win items could also be found here, like the repair kit. To make things even more shady, the power armor edition of the game cost $200, which included a helmet and a high quality duffel bag. But when players actually received it, the bag was a cheap knockoff. So to apologize, Bethesda slapped players in the face with $5 of in-game currency, which wasn't even enough to buy an in-game bag, never mind a real one. And that's not even half as bad as what EA did to Battlefront 2. It was one of the most highly anticipated games, improving on everything from the first Battlefront, except EA ruined it before it even came out. It was revealed that the game had loot boxes and a ton of microtransactions that made the multiplayer completely unfair. EA had turned the game into pay to win. If you want your favorite characters like Darth Vader or Yoda, you either had to grind for dozens of hours or simply swipe your credit card. The backlash was so powerful that Disney actually had to step in and force EA to get rid of the microtransactions. EA originally made them cheaper and just before release, they straight up deleted them from the game. The controversy was so big it caused dozens of countries to make loot boxes illegal. And even though that was a huge situation, it was nothing compared to EA's shadiest decision of all time. With UFC 4, the game originally looked great. It was received well by players and review scores were pretty high. It was released as a fully-fledged $60 game and everything seemed to be going well, but secretly EA was waiting for the hype to die down before they pulled off one of the greediest decisions in gaming. After an entire month had passed, EA updated UFC 4 with ads. Despite the game still costing 60 bucks, EA really thought they could give people real ads in the middle of a match and nobody would notice. And so another company that's been called out recently is Rockstar. Last year, they released the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition and it was a complete remake of classic games like Vice City and San Andreas. The trailers made it look for Phenomenal. They were developed on Unreal Engine, had insane graphics, and seemed like a love letter to the fans. But when it released, everything was exposed as a lie. The game was a buggy mess and had the exact same issues the originals had over 20 years ago. It showed how lazy the developers actually were and exposed Rockstar for rushing it out to make money. But did you know that Blizzard charges $100,000 to max out a single character? Yes, in Diablo Immortal, you could spend real money to level up your characters. One player took this to the absolute extreme and spent thousands on his account. He got his Barbarian to max level, but it cost six figures to do so. And this wasn't even the greediest part because he could barely play the game anymore. With his character being so overpowered, the game wouldn't matchmake him with any other players. So he spent all that money for nothing. And so it gets even more ridiculous because in 2018, Metal Gear made you pay for extra save slots. I'm not kidding. Konami released a spinoff called Metal Gear Survive. And it was a $40 survival game that was full of microtransactions. But the developers were so shady that they actually put extra extra saves behind a paywall. Yeah, if you want to start a new game or just make a character for a friend, it will cost 10 bucks. But the cooling was 100 times worse. This was an OG battle royale that was pretty popular in 2016. But thanks to the success of games like PUBG and Fortnite, the developers of the cooling decided to re-release it in 2020, except when it came back, the game cost $6. Not the most expensive until you realize that buying the game didn't actually mean you could play it. Instead, you were only allowed one match per day. If you wanted to play more than that, you had to buy matches with real money. You can buy packs of 3, 10, or 20 matches, and it will cost up to $5 to top up your tokens depending on how many you wanted. The developers made it expensive on purpose so that you would look at their online pass and think it's a bargain in comparison. Either way, players are being ripped off. One of the most famous controversies out there is when Bethesda practically invented microtransactions. In 2006, with the success of Oblivion, they released a pack named the Horse Armor DLC. This was a time in gaming when DLC actually meant extra content, so for Bethesda to charge almost 3 dollars for horse armor, it didn't go well. The biggest problem was that Oblivion is a completely single player game and the horse armor didn't actually do anything other than look good. It was a paid cosmetic that nobody would see except you and became famous because of just how greedy this was. The scariest part is that it didn't matter. The horse armor DLC was one of the best selling packs on the Xbox marketplace and it started the microtransaction trend that we all know today. Let me tell you, this gets even dumber because Mortal Kombat once charged players real money to press a button. The series is no for fatalities and finishing your opponent in gruesome ways. It's also pretty simple to do this because you just gotta press pause and the fatality combo is right there. But with Mortal Kombat X, the developers wanted to make money in the easiest way possible. So they made up one of the most ridiculous microtransactions in gaming history. You can pay a 
dollar for easy fatalities, which will make the combos simpler. And I might have mentioned that it was a dollar, but you should probably know it only gave you five fatalities. That means if you wanted 30 easy fatalities, it cost five dollars. That is real money to do a combo that was already in game. I mean, shameless. But that's not as unsatisfying as the time that Dead Rising 4 put the actual ending behind a paywall. The game already had a fully fledged story, but never actually finished the narrative. The ending was just a cliffhanger, basically a slap in the face to anyone who cared about the story. That's when the developers announced an update after release that would continue the story and actually give players some closure, except it wasn't a free update or a spin-off game. It was a paid DLC pack that you had to complete in 90 minutes, and if you didn't do all the challenges correctly, you wouldn't even get the best ending. Now I'll admit, I don't think it would be considered as greedy as the time that Call of Duty charged players for a red dot site. There's not even an explanation for this one. They literally put a red dot site in Black Ops 4 and charged a dollar for it. It was almost identical to the site that was already in game. You'd think that Activision would have learned considering that Black Ops 3 was also called out for being shady. In that game, Treyarch got everyone excited with brand new weapons and items, except you could only get them in loot boxes, which were hard enough to earn through normal gameplay. So not only were they locked behind a paywall, but you couldn't even buy the weapon you wanted. You had to gamble for it, and the odds of you earning one was like 0.8%. I'm serious. Speaking of gambling, NBA 2K20 took things to a different level. Despite already charging you for cosmetics, upgrading players, and opening packs, 2K decided it wasn't enough. In a game that is literally rated E for everyone, NBA 2K20 had a virtual casino that you could gamble your currency on. This is like if Fortnite suddenly decided to put slot machines in the game and let you gamble your V-Bucks. That's how messed up this was. Now, technically, you could argue that loot boxes, packs, and other items have always been disguised as slot machines, but this was quite literally a casino. I mean, come on. And in 2018, EA released a DLC pack for The Sims 4 called My First Pet Stuff. It was a cute pack that let you get hamsters, rats, and a few other outfits. But despite the DLC's artwork and the description that says you could dress your cats and dogs, it didn't actually include cats or dogs. If you wanted to use most of the content in this DLC, you would have to buy more DLC. I'm just getting a headache at this point. But hey, it's just bonus content. You technically don't have to pay for it if you don't want to, but this Harry Potter game, on the other hand, locked you out of the game until you threw money at it. Hogwarts Mystery is a mobile game that has become known for how scummy and manipulative it is. It has an energy system that forces you to spend energy for each task. So if you want to do a mission in the game, there's quick time events that take up your stamina. Once you run out, you've got to wait for it to replenish or pay money. And that is just the beginning, because what happened next is borderline evil. For one of the missions, you come across the Devil's Snare, and it attacks your character. So to escape, you must use up energy and fight it off. Except the amount it cost to escape the Devil's Snare was actually more than the maximum energy you could even known. So even if you went into the fight with full stamina, you would still run out. Basically, players were given the choice. They could either possibly wait hours to get through the mission or pay money to get it over with, which is just super shady. And you ever heard about how Apple was exposed for downgrading old iPhones to make you buy a new one? Well, turns out not a new trick. EA was doing it in 2011 with Battlefield Play for Free. This is their attempt to make a freemium Battlefield game, but it turned out to be a disaster. For those who did play it, you could spend real money on better weapons, and that's to be expected, but things got heated after EA decided to make the premium weapons useless. They were nerfed into the ground, forcing players to buy even newer guns to get their money's worth. It was just a gigantic scam. What's really funny is how we're returning to Bethesda, because remember how they practically invented microtransactions back in the day? That's why it's no surprise to learn that they tried to charge people to mod Skyrim on PC. Pretty common nowadays for modders to earn money through Patreon or charge people for their work. But the fact that Bethesda tried to make a profit from mods they didn't make, I mean, that's just a whole other level of greed. I will say they took it back super quick quickly because, I mean, nobody was going to stand for it. Luckily, Steam Workshop remains free to this day. Now, one of the most successful mobile games of all time could be considered pretty greedy too. While Candy Crush isn't on the same level as Hogwarts Mystery or Fallout 76, it's still raked in over a billion dollars in 2020 alone. So how'd they do this? Some have argued that the microtransactions in the game took advantage of the older generations, and honestly, it's not hard to believe. Ask a family member, they probably spent a ton on Candy Crush, and there have even been examples of people spending their entire life savings on the game. But that is not the greediest thing that the developers have done. You're not gonna believe this, but in 2014, King successfully trademarked the word candy in the EU. They used this to send out takedowns to other mobile developers who had the word candy in their titles. There was drama in the exact same year when a game called the Banner Saga Battle with King over the rights to the word saga. Yes, they tried to argue that Stoic couldn't copyright a Viking game because the Banner Saga shared one word with the Candy Crush Saga. This is just absolutely embarrassing. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's been Tommy and keep it here on T5. 5G.